Hi, it's Kip K. Welcome back to another weekend project from the pages of Make Magazine. Everybody is fascinated with robots, from these complex, servo-driven, programmable robots to even a more basic and simple kind. Well, there's no reason to be intimidated to try to build a robot when there's so many really basic projects out there, including the one we are going to do today. And it's from Make Volume 12. It's the Beetlebot. The Beetlebot project can be found in Make Volume 12, and it's by Jerome Demers. Most of the parts can probably be found in your parts bin. You'll need a couple of small motors, two momentary switches, you'll need a 2AA battery holder, a piece of metal, a small bead, some paper clips, a couple of spade connectors, and some heat shrink tubing. We'll start off with the motors and give them some tires. They're actually going to need some tread in order to get around, so we'll cut off a piece of heat shrink tubing for each of our motors, and using a soldering iron or a heat gun, we will melt our heat shrink tubing over the ends of our motors. Should look like this. Our two momentary switches will be hot glued in place at an angle with the two normally closed contacts touching. Now it's time for our motor mount, and I used a piece of one inch by three inch aluminum Placing it over the battery holder, I made some marks and then bent both ends down about 45 degrees. We'll add some hot glue and lay our motor mount in place. Now you should notice on both of your motors a positive and negative marking. These are important for the way this will be wired up as both motors need to run in opposite directions. So now it's time to glue our motors in place and we'll do that again using some hot glue and make sure that our little rubber tires are touching the ground. Our Beetlebot needs a rear wheel, so we'll use one large paper clip and insert a bead into it and shape it into shape similar to this because this will be hot glued onto the back of our Beetlebot's body. Now it's time to wire it all together and we'll start by soldering the two normally closed connections that are already touching. We'll solder those together to make sure they're secure. Then we'll take a small piece of wire and solder that between both normally open connections on our switch. Then two small pieces of wire will be soldered to our positive and negative motor connectors and soldered to the remaining connection on our switches. Then one more longer wire will be soldered to both remaining motor connections. We have to make contact in our battery holder to a central location where both positive and negative come together on one end of the battery holder. In my case, I had to drill a very small hole to get a wire through because there's a cover that fits over the batteries and then I made my solder connection there. The final connections will be the positive and negative wires that come from our battery holder. The positive wire will go to the normally closed contacts that we soldered earlier, and the negative wire will go to one of the normally open contacts on our switch. Our Beetlebot needs feelers, so that's where we'll be using a couple of paper clips, but first we're going to remove the plastic cover on our spade connectors and cut those off, and then we'll shape our paper clips into kind of a rounded feeler with a little end on it that should look like this. Add a small piece of heat shrink tubing, and then solder both ends of our feelers into our two spade connectors. After our feelers are attached to our switches, your completed Beetlebot should look like this. The way this is wired up allows the Beetlebot to change directions. Every time one of the momentary switches closes, it reverses the motor on that side. So your Beetlebot should always be getting out of the way of things. So let's test it out. Well, that's the crazy little beetle bot. Now, to finish it off like Jerome did in the original article, you want to give it some kind of a shell. So, uh, you could use something like a small peanut butter jar top and cut out the sections where the motors are and glue it in place, or get creative with any other kind of top you'd want to add to that. Also, you might want to put a switch in line. That'll give you the opportunity to actually turn it on and off rather than loading the batteries and letting her go. So, 
That's the Beetlebot. Why don't you make one this weekend? And I'll see you next time with another weekend project. <laughs>